Welcome back to the Blue Door Pop Thunderdome for another boo with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast, a show about everything and nothing coming right at your ass every single freaking weekday, five days a week. Sin Shock and his Uncle Nick, follow him on Twitter at Nick Sunday. Hey, how's it going? I'm here. I'm kind of sick, uh, which is weird because I, I don't get sick, so th- this too shall pass. <laughs> You're one of the healthiest people I know, so I mean... It, it bound to happen eventually. M- minus the extra 50 pounds of my friend, but whatever. Uh, tell a friend, spread the word, iTunes, Stitcher. I, well, in uh, iHeartRadio. Uh, but in, in America, that's technically healthy now. Yeah. I I, so. if, you're, if you're only like uh, 40 pounds overweight like me, that's healthy. Yeah. I feel like, to be so lucky to only be 40 pounds. Uh, 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 as we're, after recording this, we're going to go to Raisin Cane's. I, I think that's a good plan. So, well, I mean, it it is white meat chicken. It, well, it's, it's one of our things that we <laughs> white meat chicken. That you know, since I'm down here now, you know, hanging out in the southern suburbs, we should be doing some more more things together. Yeah. So. Tell a friend, spread the word. iTunes. Oh, I already said that. Uh, follow me on the social medias at Andy Carlson Show uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Uh, today uh, we got a game of oh, the debut of How Dead They Be. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if uh, I'm going to get a little pushback on this because um, I feel like I'm sure some people would be like, uh, that, that's a little disrespectful. That's, uh, that's a little how dare you. You get nothing. Too bad. You lose. Good day, sir. You, you're not really showing reverence for the dead. You are one pathetic. But, not pathetic, 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 pathetic. but I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically how old they be, but how old... Were, were they at the end? Game. Yep. It's, it's, a very, it's a very fair trivia game, I think. Yeah. Uh, so we got that coming up. Uh, producer Ali spoiled us. It's going to be a good time. But I also want to talk about, so jerseys. Uh, I did up a video on the Purple for the Win YouTube channel about jerseys, various Vikings ones I've had. I, I'm not a big jersey guy anymore. I, I know that you know people our age still go pretty nuts, and every time they add... Uh, a new play like people are probably already loading up on Dalvin Cook jerseys, maybe even Pat Elflin jerseys, uh, but I don't know, just not really in my DNA. Uh, number one, uh, jerseys are expensive nowadays. I mean, to get a a decent one with like the stitch numbers, that's 150 bones right there. Mm-hmm. But also, uh, I don't, it, it feels weird wearing the jersey and sort of honoring and looking up and saying that. I respect this man so much that I want to have his resemblance on me. Nah, that just seems a little odd. You know, I think a lot of people, when they do the jerseys and everything, um, you know, part of it might be for the main player that they're wearing. But, I mean, obviously, I think the overall theme is it's for the team itself. Mm. You know, you know, you're cheering on the Vikings. You're cheering on the the, the Twins, you know. And, you know, I mean... Yeah, I mean, think about uh, most of the listeners. I'm assuming a lot of you guys who have 40 hour a week, you know, jobs. You know, you know, jerseys aren't something you wear commonly. So, I mean, jerseys that you know on the weekends or you know on game day, you know, that that fun, you know, that fun thing that you can wear. And uh, I, since we don't really know the, the background of a lot of these players, uh, that's what always gets me is that. Yeah, um, who, who bought that Aaron Hernandez jersey like two two days before his murder charges came out? It was like, damn it. Except I think it's cool that teams will do merchandise buyback. Where So if you had an Aaron Hernandez jersey, uh, you could show up at Gillette Stadium. They'll swap it out for something. But, yeah, like, you never really know what's going to go down with these players. Like you could have a Ray – lots of people have Ray Rice jerseys. Lots of people have Adrian Peterson jerseys. Lots of people – uh, we'll probably go out and buy Joe Mixon jerseys, and I'm just like, eh, it just seems odd. But yeah, I, m- my main rule is you can't wear the jersey of a player that's younger than you. I, I feel like that's pretty safe. Um, uh, not that I know about too much about jerseys, but do they have just generic blank jerseys like like? Yeah, like except those like, look who, stupid. Yeah, who would say? The, those then you look like you're you're in a low budget commercial that couldn't get the NFL jersey <laughs> rights. <laughs> Then you know. Then you have no choice, and you yeah. better hope that um, you know, for our generation, you know, uh, you know, to, to find the older jerseys. You know, I mean, you know, my brother is you know ten years older than me. I mean, there's no current Vikings player that you know that would fit in you know 
Uh, see, little, that's little, perfect, little. though. You, you get old school. You get timeless players. Like uh, if you're the Vikings, you get a Fran Tarkenton or an Alan Page or a Chris Carter or Randy Moss, something like that. Yeah. Um, do they do it? Do they sell them all online? I'm assuming a I'm lot sure of they do. Yeah, and do you remember uh, when like buying stuff uh, like on really sketchy Chinese websites? Everyone's like, "Oh, this is perfectly good." I mean, I can find, I can get an authentic jersey that uh, isn't purple; it's slightly blue, but whatever. It's it's twenty dollars, and uh, all I gotta do is give my credit card to the Chinese, and yeah, I mean, well, what are they gonna do with it? <laughs> do you think they have a lot of uh, Eli Manning jerseys uh, for uh, uh, San Diego Charger Eli Manning jerseys? No, that that would be a cool collector. I, I I was always big about trying to get like sort of the offbeat jersey, and this is back before buying stuff on the internet was commonplace. So it was always the mall or like JC Penney getting the jerseys. But bef- besides like the main Vikings jerseys, I had a, a Tim Couch Browns mm-hmm. that was counter culture. Uh, I had a Peyton Manning Colts. You know that's pretty fine. Uh, I had a. A Raiders one, I can't re- remember who. I had a uh, Tim Floyd. Oh, no, um, uh, Floyd, the 49ers, not Michael Floyd. Uh, Bob Floyd? No, it was the running back. Eh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Nick, what jerseys uh, have you had in your lifetime? Um, I've only had two jerseys in my lifetime. Wait, what? what? Yeah. Um, I guess uh, where you've had more. No, 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 no. I think I have William Floyd. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I only had two. I'm a big guy, so um, I didn't really get into um, football, sports too much until Except my Nick, college days. I, I feel like I only the had bigger two. the guy, the more uh, they're you, into you, jerseys. You would think that, but yeah. I was the I'm the exception. I'm the one who doesn't who doesn't wear jeans remember? because because jerseys are the equivalent of like wearing a muumuu well, <laughs> for women. One thing is that no, because uh, big jerseys cost do cost quite a bit. So I mean. So, but I have two, yeah, and I think Nick, you, you know. Be, the, be ironic, be counterculture. Uh, get like the 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 triple XL Percy Harvin. It's probably <laughs> like awesome. ten bucks. I don't know. I don't yeah. think it is. Um, if we could even find it, but I've had two jerseys. Yeah. Um, one I found. Uh, one my buddy got me was uh, was back in '09. Was a um, Brett Favre jersey. Yeah. But then my favorite one that I think I wore most in college. Was I had a black um, you had Jimmy black Klein clip sizer? I had a Klein saucer. Um, Didn't did you have a Jermaine Wiggins jersey? No, I never <sighs> had a Jermaine. Thought nope. you did. What color was the Favre jersey? A purple. Oh, at home. You should I, wear. You should wear it more. I the, that was '09. I don't think I. You, you should frame the the Klein saucer jersey. I would do that because actually um, I wore that one quite a bit, yeah. you know, and uh, that was that was very sweet. I, I think I still. Uh, I'm in a moving process, so we, we'll find it someday. Also, a process is buying awesome gear at SodaStickCo.com. They're just at the St. Paul uh, Beer Festival, and uh, they set up shop, and I hope they did well there. Because they got really nice gear. And here's the thing. W- when you're printing, you can print any slogan or cool logo or whatever on a T-shirt. And if you print it on some subpar gear or a hat that doesn't quite fit right or doesn't really look good, yeah, people aren't going to wear it. Multiple times, and that's the best advertising that you can buy as a clothing brand is other people actually wearing the stuff, and that's what uh, Land and Soda Stick Co. do. They print on high-quality T-shirts, high-quality hoodies, every single thing. And if you use promo code PURPLEFTW, you get free U.S. shipping, sodastickco.com, or check out all their non-hockey gear at the com as well. Hit them up. Uh, so we've been watching uh, <laughs> Last Man Standing. A lot. And the, it's weird because I don't think I, I watched a full episode before it was announced that they got canceled after six seasons. But now we're sort of binge watching it. And I really appreciate the show. It's a nice it's a nice ode to the classic sitcom of the 90s. You know, obviously, uh, I think we talked about on the show where, um, you know, uh, modern television has kind of changed a lot. Uh, you know, there's a lot more content, especially on the Internet. This This is a good homage because it kind of keeps the similar um lols of yeah. what um, classic sitcoms are where it almost but sounds like can laughter uh, yeah. it, it's a it's a by the number sitcom but I, I think the writing is a little bit above because um yes. Ke- kevin hench is one of the producers and writers on this so you can tell like the comedy it's a little bit more topical a little bit more biting a little bit more like ooh, like good stuff yes. like that and I don't think the sitcom will ever fully go away. It's definitely not in the heyday like it was in the in say nineties. Yeah, um, but I think there will be a spot where 
live studio audience. You can just shut your brain off. You can just watch this. You can have some laughs. I mean, look at Two and a Half Men, uh, The Big Bang Theory, uh, this show. I feel like NBC has gone through like a half dozen uh, attempts to try and have another solid like shot mm-hmm. in front of a live studio on a sitcom uh, with no avail. But, yeah, I think there will always be a spot for that. But also the, the sitcoms like The Office and Parks and Rec and um, Modern, oh, Family. Modern Family of the uh, – Yeah, it's uh, – that's not going away anytime soon. Yeah, I, it's not going to go away. It's just it's just smaller, you know. Um, sitcoms were the 50s through the 70s. I mean, yep. everything was sitcom. Well, there's was, four um, channels. Yeah, and there was the whole um, daytime talk show. Well, not the daytime talk the 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 soap operas. There were a lot of nighttime soap operas when I've been doing my research, and you know that kind of faded away. And it's just you know an evolution. Um, they'll still be here, and um, I'll give it credit. I didn't think I would like this show as much as I did, and I didn't really want to watch it with yeah. Andy and Crystal. But um, too bad. The, the parts I've seen, I, I'll admit, I I, I laugh. I laugh out loud. Yeah. It's just kind of like I, you know, I, I feel like it wouldn't catch me off guard. But some of it's like, Before you oh, send it in? why uh, send it in? What do you mean? The faculty committee needs to approve it That's after the they check daughter? for microaggressions. Yeah, <laughs> oh. microaggressions. You mean like midget warriors? <laughs> no, they're objectionable words or phrases. For instance, midget warriors. I know what microaggressions are. It's oh, so latest liberal attack on free college. speech, and a lot of fun if you do them right. <laughs> The university has a list of stuff they don't allow speakers to say, you know, to protect the students. From what, ideas? It's just the way Words that my hurt. school does things, Dad. Please, my grade is riding on this. Fine. All right. Just pretend like you introduced me to thunderous applause. Sure. Some lady faints in the front row. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, stop. No, they'll pick her up. Come on, EMS. <laughs> get her out of here. You can't say ladies and gentlemen because it excludes those who don't identify as either. <laughs> hmm. but those are the only two choices. No, not anymore. You just have to keep it gender neutral. Okay, please continue. Hey, everybody. America's the land of opportunity. I stand before you Stop. as... Okay, by saying that America is the land of opportunity, you are implying that everyone has the same opportunities. I'm not implying it, I'm saying it. <laughs> if you live here and you work hard, you can succeed. That's uh, how this works. Yeah, that one's on here too. It hurts the feelings of those who work hard and don't succeed. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the list of stuff that doesn't hurt people's feelings? That's got to be a short one. <laughs> you have no idea how seriously my school takes this stuff, Dad. And remember the greater good here. You're helping me scan my way to passing ethics. This list is insane. If I go by these rules, I'll be going against everything I believe in. I know, but just for 15 minutes. This is an ethics class, Thank you, too. Dad. No, no, no. Can't call me Dad. What if I identify as Mom? <laughs> hey, babe. Yeah, hey. Wait a sec. I want to run see. the rewrite of my... See, all this stuff is funny because it, it's true. It's topical now, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's topical now. And uh, I feel like that's like the role of comedies in society where to poke fun at things that don't make sense. And I understand that the political correctness comes from a good place, but mm-hmm. it's gotten way overblown. Like the whole being offended for someone else and uh, – yeah, uh. Yeah. Uh, that's what I mean. As it comes from a good place, though. I mean, you understand it. But I mean, what you're starting to. Well, lots lots of things come from a good place. Like uh, labor unions started from uh, a good place. Um, yeah, but w- with this whole college thing, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I said Muggsy to college. Maybe ooh, maybe I want her to uh, be the general manager at Raising Canes, like that clip we watched before the show. In eight, he, he looked happy. In 16 years, there aren't going to be colleges anymore. It's it, there's going to be a new thing. Yeah. Well, it, it, here's what happens. It, it boils down to the generation. Like they start out with good ideas, but they don't really know how to implement them, so they're pretty heavy handed with it. And then the uh, college admin are like, "Well, we don't want to rock the boat because even though we have tenure, we want to be." Uh, collecting on that pension, and we don't want to be fired, and we want to keep enrollment numbers up, so we'll just go with it. As opposed to being adults and standing up, be like, hey, 
Shut up. <laughs> yeah, but who really knows? Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see the um, the cameos of Richard Karn and Patricia Richardson and Jonathan Taylor Thomas on the show. <laughs> I like that we get how we went far ahead to like to see the show to know all about the show before it actually airs. So I, I actually like doing that because you know, the wife and I will occasionally watch seasons of Top Chef or Biggest Loser or whatever, mm-hmm. and I like knowing who wins. Because then, yeah. you, you know, as you're watching, you're like, oh, man, how'd you get through this challenge? Her hell, that was terrible. And <laughs> you don't even know if that's Top Chef or Big Loser. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, my big issue with, uh, when it comes to um, shows in general, um, and I've, I vented about this a couple years ago, and it's, a, it's about um, the networks that air them and cancel them right away. Mm-hmm. Um, to give a show a chance. That's why I, I try to stay away from sitcoms because every season, uh, fall or spring, they always release new shows, new ideas. Yeah. And the first season is always the roughest. And if you don't catch a group of, you know, the demographic right away, um, they cut you before giving the show a couple of years to develop your show. I mean, that's well, why... That, that's because there's, there's so many, there's so much competition now. They got to <sighs> keep up. It's mind-blowing, and I wish they would give it time because shows like Parks and Rec, I hated the first season so much. And it took me to the second and third season to really enjoy and appreciate the show. And I, I think a lot of shows have issues like that. Um, the first season of Cheers was a miserable one. Wow. It so that so was the last one, then everyone in between. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, um, I don't know. That's my little quick beef on sitcoms. And you know, it was, great, it you was a great show? Frasier. They cancel shows after like two or three episodes. Give a show a, a full season to mm. develop characters and develop storyline, plotline. What's development. your favorite sitcom that got canceled too early in your opinion? I vented about this a couple of years ago, which made me almost start my first po- podcast. Was the TV show Selfie, which was <laughs> which <laughs> was John John, John Cho Cho and Isla Fisher. No, uh, it was uh, Karen Gillian, who I'm in love with. Oh, the chick from Guardians. Yes. Okay. Um, it was a show. It was it was a telling of a, a retelling of My Fair Lady. The whole uh, Karen Gillian was a self centered, uh, you know, character driven by social media, and it was all about herself. And realized that she's yeah. really shallow and vain, and like went to John Cho's character, who's like a, a like a marketing guy who helps improve company image or something. And um, it was about you know those two developing a friendship and working together to help each other out, you know, him help her, you know, become less shallow, less vain and stuff, and, you know, focus more on the yeah, world. Yeah, friendship. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And possibly sexual innuendos? Woo! Anyway, um, the show lasted half a season before they canceled it, and the numbers weren't too bad at all when they canceled it. And, I don't know, that got me heartbroken, and I tried starting a save selfie hashtag, and <laughs> it had, had people for yeah. a while, and... But now it's 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 gone now. Uh, there was um, a a show on Fox that was a sort of a fictional take on Anthony Bourdain's book Kitchen Confidential, and it, it was a really young Bradley Cooper, like before he he started blowing up. And it was a great show. I have it on DVD. Frank Langella is the restaurant owner, and it, it, the re- oh John. Speaking of John show, oh here it is. Sixteen, I quit school. I saved just enough for a one-way ticket to Paris. Maybe I just wanted it really bad, and then when I got it too early, I didn't know how to hold on to it. What do you want? I'm going to run the best restaurant in the world. Are you sure he's famous? If you're a chef, he's like the Rolling Stones. I don't want my restaurant to be a place where you come and eat. I want people to sit at that table and be sick with longing. So, where you been? Louisiana. Don't want. Actually, wait, hold on. Oh. Snorting, injecting. All right, so Bradley Cooper did a movie called Burnt. And this is a mashup of the audio from the Burnt trailer with the Kitchen Confidential. Oh, that's why I'm totally yeah. confused. Yeah. Oh, I'm totally confused with what I see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't find a good clip of it. But it, it was a great show. Uh, canceled way before its time. And, oh, I wanted to get this in before we play the game. Knock on Ed's door and tell him I got a buddy who wants to say hi to him, okay? Uh, it's going to be great working with you again, buddy! Richard Kahn. Who? <laughs> Man. 
No, Al. It has been way no, too long. Al. That last project we did seemed to last forever. <laughs> Let's do it again. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mr. B, Ed said he's in a meeting and that he does not want to be disturbed, you idiot. <laughs> that last part might have been meant for me. That's all right, Mike. Just take a look at my designs for the mall stores and give me a call with the good news. Good buddy. <laughs> Say hi to the wife and the three boys. Honey. <laughs> Three girls. Really? God, I, I seem to remember it was three boys. Uh, I, hope that, I hope that's it. I hope that was <laughs> that's all they give no, them. I, I love shows that have callbacks or wink nods and uh, have a sense of humor. Like, they're s- sort of self-aware. Mm-hmm. Like, on the Christmas episode where uh, the wife, Nancy Travis, was like, hey, you should wear the Santa Claus uh, outfit. And then Tim Allen was like, me? Santa Claus outfit? Come on. That's or cute. when they were trick or treating, and then he sees a Buzz Lightyear walk by, and he's like, "You got the wings wrong." <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love shows that have a, a sense of humor. Also, a sense of humor. How old they be? Celebrities are old. Some celebrities do not have a sense of humor. Kids. The question is, how old? Get off my lawn. Time for another rousing round of how old they be. I can't let you in because you're old as fuck. <laughs> for this club, not, you know, for the earth. All right, so we have not yet cut a, a, a new intro for how dead they be, but uh, out of respect. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, you know the game. Play along at home or in the car or at the gym or ever what you're doing. Uh, here's what it is. Uh, Nick and I, we guess uh, how old old the celebrity is but in this case at what age they passed away at what age they passed away uh lowest score wins if you get it right on you get five point deduction you got 13 names here from producer alley and let's friggin go uh so the oh wow uh the first list is funny people funny people so great job alley i just gonna tell you never met you but great effing job i love this list Allie, actually, um, I've discussed this with her. She looks a lot like the oldest daughter on Last Man Standing Season 1. Ooh. She really does. Ooh. I gotta look up pictures of her. <laughs> uh, number one, first one, Lucille Ball. Lucille Ooh. Ball, as in Nick would like to give producer Allie, the Lucille Ball. Uh, Lucy, <laughs> and I love Lucy, Helen North. Uh, uh, Lu- I, I love Lucy. I love Lucy. Yeah, I love Lucy. All right, so what year did she... Uh, how old was she when she passed away? Oh, okay. So, age. Okay, yeah. age when they died. Okay. Yeah. So, I doubt anyone here is under 10. So, okay, let's do... Oh, All that's right. sad. Okay. Well, that's, I, uh, I, I don't remember her dying recently because that would have been a big deal. Everyone comes out. I was the biggest Lucy fan ever. But did she die young? I mean... Uh, I, wait, wait, uh, this one, I think, is going to be some big scores because a yeah. lot of these I don't even know. Okay, um... The, this is this will be tough, I think. Yeah. I mean, because uh, I think there's a big old age range when yeah. people have died. Right. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say sixty sixty three. I went eighty. Eighty. Lucille Ball. Oh, this could be eight. big. Eight, eight, eight hundred ninety. Lucille Ball was seventy seven. Okay. Oh, that one hurt right I away. I feel like she, this should this should be a bonus thing yeah. of what year they died in. I th- she made it through. I think the eighties. Yeah. I think she, I think eighties. I think was man. man. Uh, next up, John Belushi played Joliet Jake in The Blues Brothers and Blutarski in Animal House. John Belushi, how old was he when he died? How did he die? <sighs> Drugs. <laughs> Man, uh, I know he... Uh, okay. Okay. Young, for sure. But how young? Like 30s, 20s? Are we doing that um, age thing, like like if we get exactly right, five points? Yeah, just like I said. Okay. Come on, Nick. I wasn't listening. I was playing games. Uh, I'm going to say 33. I said 43. 43. John Belushi was 33. Oh, wow. Suck it. Right. Suck it. Suck it. Suck it. All right, Dang. So, that, that, fi- that So it's a five-point deduction for me because, yeah, I, I feel like um, yeah, I, thought he was I, I feel like actors, like serious actors and also like Belushi, there's, a, there's like a, you know, musicians have 27. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a 33, but yeah, whatever. Uh, next up, number three, John Candy. John Candy, who played Buck Russell in Spaceballs. No. No. Uh, Spaceballs, Home Alone, Planes, Trains, Automobiles. Great he, movies. Um, Blues Brothers, 
very underrated uh, performance of Blues Brothers. You, you know the whole deal about John Candy. So how old is he when he died? He died relatively young. I know that. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, for, what was his last movie? Wagons East? Something like that. And, like, I think yeah. the mid early 90s, I think. And Chris Farley is the next name. And his last movie was uh, Almost Heroes, I want to say. Like him and Matthew um, Perry were, like, oh, trying to beat yeah. uh, Lewis and Clark. All right, so John Candy, I'm going to say 48. I said 41. 41. John Candy was 43. Ooh. Oh, darn it. Yeah. Oh. All right, next up, uh, Chris Farley, play oh. Tommy, Tommy Boy, Mike Donnelly in Black Sheep, SNL, uh, the original voice of Shrek. Uh, he died during filming of that. Yeah, you listen to the, uh, the, like the rough draft of Shrek. It was, oh, it, it, was, it was weird. It was off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Farley, get yours written. Uh, yep. Uh, he was. I'm pretty sure he was the exact same age as Belushi uh, when he died. Uh, so I'm gonna say 33. It's a 35. 35. Chris Farley was 33. Oh, <clears throat> darn it. Okay. <clears throat> I I need that because Lucy Lucille Ball not kicking it early that kind of <laughs> destroyed me. Uh, yeah, it, it was weird because. I remember in an interview, um, someone was saying that Farley idolized Belushi and like would walk around SNL wardrobe trying on like his old uh, costumes and stuff, and then and whipping yeah. the costumes probably. <laughs> Number five, tragic. another SNL alum, very very tragic. Phil Hartman, uh, Bill Mc, yeah, that's why I feel bad about this game, but also I'm having fun and I'm probably winning now. Uh, so uh, Bill McNeil, News Radio, uh, Ted Martin and Jingle All the Way, SNL. Uh, ooh, um, bringing down the house. Um, he was house guest. The house guest, yeah. I knew, was, was, I knew it was house something. That was a great Him movie. Him and Sinbad. <laughs> was a great movie. All right, we got to try and find that after this with Raising Kids. Uh, so Phil Hartman, ah, su- super young, like relatively young. A wife killed him and then killed herself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, yeah. It, yeah. Ro- Rogan uh, relays the story about him because uh, everyone was like, Phil, you should just divorce her. He's like, uh, just give her half and tell her to go away. He's like, she doesn't get half. She gets two-thirds because the lawyers take a third. Oh. Yeah. All right, so Hartman. <clears throat> actually, I want to say he, he's a little bit older because his career started late because he was originally like a album art art designer. Well, he was doing SNL for a while. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't young. He wasn't that late. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, I'll, I'll just say 50. Uh, I'm going 45. 45. Phil Hartman, 49. Oh, nice. Not okay. bad. It's not bad. Hmm. Uh, next up, uh, name 6 out of 13. 6 out of 13. Hope you're playing along because you're probably not beating me, except for Lucille. Gosh darn it, Lucille Ball. Uh, number 6, Madeline Kahn. Madeline Kahn. I love. I'm so happy. She's. I love Madeline who Kahn. Who played Elizabeth in Young Frankenstein, Lily Van Stoop in Blazing Saddles, and Empress Nympho in History of the World Part 1. <laughs> If, if none of you guys have ever seen yeah. her, uh, Madeline is fantastic. She died too young, I think. Yeah. She was on a sitcom right before she died in the 90s. I think she might have been on like a Cosby remake or something, like in the 90s. Ah, or something, something. She did She did some comedy before she died, I think, in the late 80s, yeah. early 90s. Sorry. I, 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 uh, I, I, I don't know who this person is. So this um, is going to be a shot in the dark. I think I think you you might have a shot to make up some ground here. Maybe I. Uh, I'm uh, since he said that she died young. I'm going to say 40, 42. I said sixty. Damn. You might be closer though. I might totally be off on age. Madeline Kahn was fifty seven. Yeah. You son of a kill you. <laughs> uh, those are all seven. Big in the seventies. Big. Yeah. yeah. To me, I think she was funnier than Lucy. Uh, next up, number seven, Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac of the Bernie Mac Show. He's gone. Uh, the Ocean's movies. Yeah, uh, Mr. 3000. Uh, relatively recently, yeah. Uh, Bernie Mac, how old was he? Okay. Um, he, he died young, but he's been around for a while. He's like a working comedian. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm just going to say 50. I said 46. 46. Bertie Mac was 50. Wow, three. Send That's it in, Jerome. Three. It's, mm. okay, it's okay, Nick, because I'll, I'll mess up on um, Robin Williams. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, next up, another way, way, way too young. Uh, number eight, Brittany Murphy. Brittany Murphy. Uh, Taj and Ty and Clueless. Saren just married um, Lu- Luann and King of the Hill. Wow, I did not know that. And then um, also yep. 8 Mile. Also, was she in some random like uh, rom-com movie? She was in all just made was a random rom com. I mean, she, she did a few. She did a few of those cute things. Um, I think there was like a dress <laughs> one or something. Or there, I think she did some random. All right, so Brittany Murphy. All right, I wrote uh, young, 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 young. Except twenties or thirties. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say twenty nine. I I went I went to thirty three. Thirty three. Brittany Murphy was thirty two. Oh. Mm. Okay, huh. that's better. I was gonna go twenty eight yeah. first, I, but yeah, okay. Gosh, she was really hot in eight mile. Uh, five names to go. Five names to go. Uh, yeah, they had a like complicated relationship because she banged that other dude, and yeah. I don't remember how like it really ended with her. I think they just kind of like okay, she slept with the other dude, and then yeah. kind of like left uh, all right, eight mile. Uh, number nine, okay, Les- Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen, who playing Frank Drebin in the Naked Gun movies. Uh, Leslie Nielsen. Hey, he, he, did he die in twenty sixteen? I, I feel like he's pretty recent. I was gonna say fourteen, maybe. But yeah. Hmm. Huh. All right. So had a long run. He, he's one of those guys. It's tough to tell his age because he had the silver fox look very early. Like he was very Cal Ripken, Steve Martin esque in that department, where he, you look the <laughs> same from thirty to eighty. You know. I, um, I love him in airplane. Yeah. <laughs> Airplanes will always be my favorite Leslie Nielsen. All right, so Leslie Nielsen. <sighs> well, I will mind. Mm, uh, I'll just say seventy-two. I said eighty. I said eighty-five. Ah, shit, this could be bad. Uh, Leslie Nielsen was eighty-four. Uh, oh. it's, things are falling apart. I'm pretty sure you're leading, even though I got three dead nuts on. I don't know. I th- I, th- I think it's about even. All right, so we got four names left. Ooh, hard I'm, names. I'm going to try not to F this up. Uh, Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor, who's famous for being... On fire. Uh, G- Gene Wilder's uh, number two. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Wally and See No Evil, Hear No, Hear no Evil, Grover and Silver Streak, stand-up comedian. Um, Should have been in Blazing Saddles. Oh, that guy he, died he was really supposed young. to be. Yep, he was supposed to be in Blazing Saddles, but um, I think drug stuff... But, I mean, he was a writer. I think... Drug stuff messed it up, and like the producers of the the production company was yeah. like, "Ah, oh, that's not good." I mean, that's right. a Richard Pryor. Uh, I won't mind. Uh, I feel like he died young, but how young is young? I mean, this could be a Gene Wilder thing where we didn't know that he was alive. Still, uh, Richard Pryor. I- I'll Gene Wilder should be uh, on this list. I- I'll-, I'll say mm, fifty-seven. I just said 50. You might be closer, Richard, uh Richard Pryor was 65. Wow, oh, that wow. helped out a lot. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I was okay, just going to say 60, it. and I felt... Yeah, I, I feel like he had a little bit of the Gene Wilder, because hmm. uh, a lot of these guys you know, shy away from the spotlight, whether it be just career-wise or personal-wise, and then we just sort of shelve them. And then they pass away, and they're like, oh. Hmm. All right, three to go. All right. I'll try not to F this up. Joan Rivers... Joan Rivers, stand-up comedian, uh, mother of Melissa Rivers, not related to Philip Rivers. That's all. Um, so Joan Rivers, um, <laughs> dot with, matrix and spaceballs. With all with all the plastic surgery, it's gonna be tough to tell because she's had a lot of work done. And when she passed away, she looked like forty. She was forty-five, maybe. Except like, you know, um, man, like old, but seventies. Maybe 80s? No, that doesn't make sense. All right. Um, I'm going to say Joan Rivers was 79. I went 80. 80. Uh, Joan Rivers was 81. Oh, oh. so close. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh. If we backtrack this, I think right. I'm off only by one on yeah. a couple, and that's bullshit. <laughs> uh, so next close. up. Yeah. Well, Nick, um, if you get it one off, you, you only get one point. Still, I, uh, uh, so next up, two good names ago, two names ago, Gary Shandling, uh, Larry Sanders from the Larry Sanders Show, and okay. Harold Anderson from What Planner Are You From? I heard the Larry Sanders Show, or I think there's another one called It's Gary Shandling Show. Yeah, it was supposed to be very fantastic. Um, 
uh, television shows from the 80s and 90s. Like, very well written, very, very well respected shows. All right, so Gary Shandling, he, he died recently, uh, relatively young, but not like young, young, you know? All right, I wrote mine. Uh, like 60s, you go 60s or 70s. Oh, I, I'm going to do like I did last week. Um, Nick, I'm either going to guess 67 or 66. 67. Okay. Uh, 67 is for me. What'd you guess? I, oh. I'm, I'm guessing 75. I think he was oldest. 75. Gary Shanley was 66. Oh, you picked the wrong one. Oh, my God. I didn't even realize that. Damn it. You picked the... Uh, this is like from the beginning of Walk the Line where uh, Johnny Cash's brother dies and the dad's like, uh, Robert Patrick's like, they took the wrong son. <laughs> you picked the wrong one. I cannot oh, believe damn oh, it. Oh, it's way off. Mm. Not too. All right. I, th- I, I, think, I think you're back on top now. Don't I know it. And number 13, Whoa. Robin Williams, mm. Mrs. Doubtfire, Aladdin, Night at the Museum. That really good episode of Law and Order SVU, lots of stuff. <laughs> All right, so Robin Williams, <laughs> really good episode. That was a good episode. That was really creepy. Uh, Robin Williams, young but not like overly old. I feel like uh, I should know. Yeah, I feel like I should. I should have this memorized, but I. Don't, I feel like so. this could be a shambling situation. Uh, I'm gonna say Robin Williams was. How old is his, da- his daughter? Zelda's like in her twenties. Uh, I'm going to say, ah, not hell, just 60. I went 59. 59. Robin Williams was 63. Uh, All right, so it. here it is, Nick. Here okay. it is. All right, so I, I got three dead nuts on. My original score was 64, which would make it 49. That's very svelte. That's very a nice. very trim. A very Ryan Lochte-esque 49. And Nick, with the final score... A 59. Oh. I take it. I take it. I take it. Oh. Ah. I need a one. Oh, man. It's okay, Nick. Great cash, homie. You just uh. need to get one, like, right on. Yeah, that would have. Well, I mean, I mean, if. Uh, yeah, I could not. Oh. Where's my money? That was good times. That was good times. Also, good times is coming back for the second half of the show. Bull with Andy Carlson on Wednesday. Andy Carlson here, Purple for the Win podcast, letting you know that we'll be here all off season long talking the Vikings angle on everything Combine, Pro Days, for Agency, the Draft, OTAs, Training Camp in 2017. Baby. Get the show on 1500 ESPN Podcast One and the Podcast One app. And coming back into the Blue Door Pop Thunderdome Studios, and you, you, you know what's up. You know, with the new menu changing, some of the old standbys are still there, though. The cease and desist. It's, it's one of my favorite ones. It's uh, what, what a lot of guests get, uh, where they're like, what's good? You know, what's good here? I'm always directing to the cease and desist. What is Lando Lakes white American cheese, yellow American cheese, diced pickles stuffed in that blue sea patty. Then you got the pickles, onions, lettuce, homemade American sauce on the top. It's a, uh, if you think about it, just, just, just think about it. Just think about what that might entail. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, you can uh, go down to all three Twin Cities locations, uh, Longfellow, St. Paul, University on Coma, or use Bite Squad. Use Bite Squad to get sent right to you. Hit it up, the BDP.com. Ah, feels good to win. How dead they be? Uh, yeah, you know I learned a lot from it. I mean, yeah. the, the conversations we had talking about the movies and the shows. I'd like to think that we're honoring them by doing a show, doing a game like this. We'll, we'll, we'll still get emails. Let's do the news. You are fake news, sir. Go ahead. Can you... George Bush doesn't care about black people. I ain't got time to believe. You can't handle the truth. The news with Uncle Ben. All right, Nick. What's going on in the world today? All right, I'm bringing some uh, some less than cheerful stories um, to start off with. Um, something that I think there just kind of needs to be talked about in general. Yes, uh, I want to talk. Oh, about... oh wait, is this is actual serious, like sad story though. Yeah, 
Oh, okay. Uh, the kind of All right. Uh, we're talking about um, uh, from CNN here. The, uh, a child died from um, dry. I'm not making this up. Something called dry drowning. It's something you kind of hear about every couple of years, and sadly, um, this story um, happened uh, over this past week. Uh, a kid from Tex, a boy from Texas, was on a family vacation, uh, was swimming, and then, you know, he was fine. Mm-hmm. And then a week later, um, having breathing issues, um, to, went to the hospital and um, and and then just died. So kind of a oh. heartbreaking thing. It's something that doesn't. It doesn't happen a lot. It's something of pretty rare instance, but I feel like every two or three years, and I feel like in Minnesota you, hear, you can hear quite a bit, um, these instances where kids are swimming, they they take in water, you know, obviously mm-hmm. they accidentally swallow a little bit of water, but it goes down like the wrong air pipe and gets trapped in the lungs, and, um, you know, the kids experience just... Um, so it, the kid wasn't, like, lethargic or sleepy or anything like that? Um, not at the beginning. It yeah. took a while for it to happen. I think the next night after the swimming, uh, the kid began to vomit, had diarrhea. They thought it was just... A, it looked like a simple stomach bug. But then, um, you know, the problems continued for a full week. Um, he was complaining about pain, uh, like, you know, a shoulder pain. They took him into to a doctor, and then um, you know, his breathing just struggled, and... Uh, um, yeah, they um, um, they rushed him to the hospital, and then the, um, they tried to resuscitate him, and then he um, he was he didn't survive. So um, uh, the doctors found water in his lungs and around his heart, and this became known as a dry dr- um, a, a symptom called dry drowning. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, as I said, um, something I don't really want to talk about, but it's something you know. You always want to keep in the back of your head. Well, I mean, it's yeah. summer. Lot, lots of people are out swimming around the lake or on the river. And, um, yeah, this probably happens a lot more. Except how can you prevent it, though? Um, they, they say um, anytime if they have any of these symptoms, yeah. I mean, they want you to, like, like it, can be pre- it can be prevented if you go in and, you know, like they have to perform a special surgery to get that water out of yeah. the lungs. Well, but, I mean, it's 2017. I feel like we should be able to, like, hey, you got water in your lungs. Let me get that for you. Z- <laughs> yeah, I wish it was that simple. But I mean, I, it's it's a very rare thing. I mean, usually, you know, if people, you know, if kids swallow a lot of water, you know, they most likely are going to drown. But yeah. as I said, this is heartbreaking, and you know, it's not an everyday occurrence, but something to keep track of. This brings me into uh, kind of some levity. So at the end of the movie, The Hunley, which was about the CSS Hunley, the first. Uh, like legit submarine that was used uh, in the Civil War. And uh, it was on the Confederate side, obviously, CSS. And in the movie, uh, I think Amand Asante, you remember him? It, it, was, it, was a, it was a made-for-TV movie for TNT. And uh, like Donald Sutherland was PGT Beauregard, who was the commander of the Charleston forces. Hmm. And uh, at, at the end, they, they blew up the Union ship, which is historically accurate. They actually did. And what it was that at the... It was just like a ramming vessel, so they they had a sharp spike with a, a, a makeshift torpedo at the front, and what they would do is they would just ram like the wooden frigates with it, and then they would back up and they would pull the pin like pulling a pin on a grenade and then oh throw. wow! So they actually successfully uh, sank a Union ship that was part of the blockade uh, around Charleston, and then in, in the movie they like, got stuck on the bottom. They're like, all right, um, well. Let's uh, drown instead of suffocate, which I, I think would be the better way to go. So they just open up the hatch and uh, drown. And oh. that actually didn't raise until well, a couple of years ago, maybe like four or five. But it, it was that, it was a really good movie. Or maybe it was just because I was a kid and I liked the Civil War back then. We're going to be fast. We'll go back. I like the Second Civil War back then. Yeah. Oh, eight men drowned here two weeks ago. Just been an accident. In the submarine they called the Hunley, they fought to save their home. And their sacrifice brought hope to a nation. Impact in 10 seconds! Starring Armand Asante and Donald Sutherland in The Hundley. Coming soon to video. (laughs) How's that for stupid recall? I can't even remember my wife's birthday. But I can remember a movie I saw in 1990. No, I'm just kidding. Um, October 2nd. That's not it. Um, All right, what's next? I totally lost it. All right. All right. Um, some local news. Um, um, Twin Cities, we are getting a championship uh, game coming again. Yes. Uh, 
the Hazeltine, uh, so we're talking about golf, is hosting the, the 2019 Women's PGA Championship, um, which is pretty exciting because I believe uh, it was last year that the um, Hazeltine Golf Course hosted, uh, I think, uh, one of the, a golf major. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, the Ryder Cup. Was it the Ryder Cup? Okay, yeah. So, you know, the Twin Cities are pretty big right now. We got, we're got we getting the Super Bowl this upcoming year. We got... Mm-hmm. I forgot if we're getting like a Final Four. We're getting yeah, we got a Final Four coming at U.S. Bank yes. at some point. Yeah, so I mean, hey, I think uh, Twin Cities. You know, any good press is good. Any good, any press is good press. And uh, I, I know nothing. I'm so sorry, ladies. I know nothing of the women's golf at all. But it's big saying that uh, Minnesota is now being, at least you know, morally considered a good place for people to come and play golf. Yeah. I, I, I would say, man, it, it'd be awesome if there was one, like, signature event that Minnesota's known for. Like, Indy has the Indy 500, Kentucky has Kentucky Derby, uh, Maryland has Belmont Stakes, where it's the annual event. Um, like, Daytona has, or, or, uh, mm-hmm. oh, the Brickyard 500. Uh, but the, like, one event that Minnesota could have, like, every single year, people show up. It's, like, almost like Woodstock. I haven't quite figured that out, but it's cool that we're getting some more golf love because there's a bunch of great golf courses around these fantastic Twin Cities. I wish I golfed. Um, I don't know. Um, I, are you much of a golfer? No. You, you seem like a golfer. I, I tried it once, and um, it was something my mother got me into in high school. Like We tried yeah. taking lessons together, kind of like a son, uh, son-mother bonding thing, and I, I never got more upset at her more than anything was because it's because I hated it. I didn't make any sense, and it's more just because I'm just stupid when it comes to trying to play sports. And golf's not even much of a sport. You didn't. I didn't. Go, I couldn't swing the ball, and I couldn't hit the ball past uh, mm-hmm. 25 yards. Golf's an activity. To me, it was like a war. Man. I, I, I separate. It was like a war. I separate sports uh, in sports and activities. Like NASCAR, I feel like is an activity. That's a kind of. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. Or because no. you know, like uh, when they go poker or chess, like that's a mental sport. No, that that's an activity. If it, if it's something you sweat at, I call it a sport. Yeah, or like uh, curl, curling. That's an activity. Yeah, a sport. I think that's a sport. Yeah. Um, all right. What's next? <laughs> all right. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on this one to make sure it's accurate and make sure it's not a fake story. But I believe it is true. Uh, after a couple of websites, I found. Um, out of <laughs> out of Idaho, a, wo- a woman from tw- uh, Twin Falls is uh, suing the Mendonca County uh, School District after she tripped over a speed bump in a parking lot at the high school. Now, is this <sighs> one of those lawsuits where it's only like a lawsuit because it's required for an insurance claim? Uh, I'm not, you know, like that story in in Manhattan where uh, a couple years ago where it's like uh, this aunt is suing her ten year old. Uh, nephew for breaking her wrist. It's like no, that's because of insurance. I'm assuming. I'm assuming some type of insurance <laughs> thing. But uh, I don't. This comes back from twenty uh, 2015 now. But I don't. I don't know why news stories are now coming on it. I think maybe like it's now somewhat being processed. Yeah. Um, but the woman um, Jan Duff <laughs> Duff uh, claimed that the area was poorly lit and that she injured her knees and wrists when she uh, fell and hit the asphalt. So the course is set for tomorrow, so hopefully, or, uh, sorry, as we're recording, it's June 12th, so maybe there'll be more levity by the time you guys hear this, but uh, yeah, the the speed bump is at the exit to the stadium is the same blackish color as the asphalt. Um, now she's suing for uh, medical expense, loss of household services, lost wages, out-of-pocket expenses, and interest on special damages, what, uh, I'm... There should be a rule where you can't sue people for well, stupid things. Because we used to have dignity. I mean, this lady 10 years ago, especially even 50 years ago as well, just would get up, dust herself off, be like, well, I'm kind of a dumbass. That's not going to happen again. But now we're, we're a culture of taking dives. We're, we're like um, soccer players and NBA players. Like when someone nudges you, uh, you just fall over like you got shot with, with a 50 caliber machine gun. I was like, I was assaulted. No. No, you just nudge you with like um, w- uh, in the election when Trump's aide grabbed the elbow of that lady, mm-hmm. uh, and there's clear video of it. Except uh, then she claimed that she was assaulted. And it's just like I-, I understand this is the culture that we live in now. Like um, back in the day, if two men had a disagreement, 
they could take it outside and settle it, and then that would be that. But now, even if you if you use uh, strong language uh, or uh, hateful language towards a person, that could be considered assault. Like I, I'm waiting for that landmark assault case where uh, one dude just dresses down another dude verbally, and then that constitutes as simple assault. It's coming. It's coming, Nick. And then that will be the legal precedent where everything of uh, the, this subpar society that we're building will be hoisted upon. Uh, from this website, I'm reading it off of um, autoevolution.com. Uh, <laughs> there's a sen- a, I'm reading the sentence here verbatim here. She also noted a decrease in the value of her life as well as a reduction of enjoyment. Well, that's kind of Coupled with <laughs> inconvenience and non-economic damages. No, this lady sounds like a peach to begin with, so that's a pretty low bar. I she went know. from uh, like a 1 to a point five. I... I really want there to be video of this girl falling. I want. I really want to see this. And have you ever YouTubed? Um, you know, everyone has dash cams in other countries. Uh, they'll show videos of like dash cams of people approaching cross rocks, and then like there'll be that quote: uh, the pedestrian walking, but then kind of stumble his way to be quote hit by his car unquote. You know, yeah. it's they're like trying to get a lawsuit or something. It's it's BS. I don't know. People are trying to. Oh yeah, milk money out of so many freaking things. It's and it's yeah, the, their their the the rationale is that it's like oh, it's not the person's money; it's the insurance company's money. Which, I mean, sure, I mean, if that that helps you, dash cam. We're in Asia. Other than the guy, just like he, he's laying down. Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold on. So he didn't even make contact with his vehicle. Yeah, he, he just, just literally like laid down like he was yep. taking a nap. Yep. Oh my gosh. He he laid down like he was at a beach and uh, just like ah, let's get some sun. I mean, I think theoretically you can counter sue, and you could counter sue for trying to. Oh, here it is. Oh, there it is. He just jumps on the dash of a car. You notice that a lot of these are either uh, Asian or Russian? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. A lot more because uh, hardly anyone in America has dash cams. Uh, my buddy Sam does. I feel like I should get a dash cam now. I feel like I should too. Yeah. I, I want to get one. Yeah, because um, I mean, there's a lot of idiots out there. and oh, Except the whole thing about countersuing. So they're at this point in their life where they're trying to just pick up insurance claims, hammer a check. Uh, how much are you really going to counter sue them for? Like that, they're an empty bag. I mean, that would just be a waste of time. I mean, <laughs> it, it, I mean it, what's it, up, bro? It ruins storylines of you know people who actually do get hurt and. Yeah. Oh wait! Oh he! Oh, hold on! Hold on! All right, so the same one. Uh, so this guy just jumped out on and jumped on the hood of this car going down the road like maybe fifteen miles an hour. And then he gets up. He's. I, I'm pretty sure he saw that they had a dash cam. Mm-hmm. So he just gets up and walks away. He's fine. And then the car is just still sitting there. And then he runs out in front of another car. And they, they still have it on dash cam. That's amazing. That's amazing. All right. What's the last one? All right. Um, we're going nerdy. Nerdy. Nerdy sci-fi-ish. Not sci-fi. <laughs> we're going nerd on this final story. Talk about my favorite place, Las Vegas. Um, this past couple months, there have been a couple of Legionnaire disease <coughs> outbreaks. Again, another storyline of a disease that doesn't happen that often. But, I mean, I think every year there's usually a disease that kind of breaks out. And this is Vegas, my home, my, my second homeland. Wait, now, what, what is – so what is it? It's a, it's a, it's a bacteria that, um, that gets into the lungs and um, – Oh, maybe I have it. You might have it, and I will be very upset. It's a, it's like a form of pneumonia. Um, it comes from a. It's like a bacteria, though. I have it. No, you don't. You don't have Web it. WebMD says I have it. You do not have it, and it's very rare. And it's mostly known for uh, um, the cause of it is that it forms in like um, cooling tanks. Um, they like cooling tanks that aren't working properly that develop a lot of heat, mm. and um, you know because they they survive in like warm environments. And so a lot of times they usually um, like affect in like pool areas or hotels and stuff. 
And uh, I know there's actually a Wikipedia page of list of Legionnaires disease outbreaks, and they're not showing the one that happened uh, last year, but one happened in Hopkins uh, uh, <laughs> last year. I know that because I, I work for an environmental company, and we talk about Legionella and uh, Legionnaires disease and yeah, like, like it's something. Wait, wait, we so, can... how, how did it start? Because with the the name, you, you think is like, oh, the, the French legionnaires they got it in uh, in Africa, smoked them too many cigarettes. All right, um, this story in particular is coming from um, uh, the Rio Casino Hotel and Casino. So oh, of course, so oh, the WSCP the, going on. So off the strip uh, with Penn Teller, are. my favorite place. One of my favorite places. Also, the World Buffet. Didn't we go there once? Yes, we died. Yeah. It no, wasn't no. as good as back and now. Yeah. Um, I feel like uh, I, th- I think I went there once with Sam and Brent, and I, I died. It oh. was so much food. <laughs> anyway, um, um, all that's happened so far that's listed is that um, one, uh, one guest got uh, affected in March and one in April. So they're trying to figure out. Um, it was found in the hot water systems of the hotel's towers. Oh. Well, that's kind of bad. Yeah. So, uh, as I said... Um, um, so they're disinfecting everything with chlorine, you know, they're trying to make everything clean and they're making sure all the rooms are um, <coughs> are fine and, and, and dandy. But, uh, you know, so, so something that's not common, but it does happen, and if left untreated for a long period of time, um, it, it, is, it is lethal. Long past checkout time, sir. What? I'm in no condition to check out. You've overstayed think... your reservation, sir. We need the room. But Nevada innkeeper laws make it illegal to evict Except a guest. Except in cases of sick. public health and do... safety, sir. You're obviously experiencing the occupant some sort of a flagrant and I... repeated disregard for acceptable standards of personal hygiene. I haven't disregarded my hygiene. Sir, sir what I'm we're a... trying to say yeah. is you've gone nose deaf. What? You're oblivious to your effect on other guests. I really don't see what effect I've had on other guests if I'm not in my room. Minutes. And... 15 or... minutes. 15 minutes. Hey, 15 minutes. Pack your things or we will pack them for you. Get the picture? What? Do you get the picture, sir? Do Pack not make us come back here. Friend. Pack your things! Friend. Hey, okay. Okay. He, he, he has an Academy Award. From what? Uh, Casey Affleck. Oh, no. I, I thought you were talking about uh, the, the guy he's insulting. Yeah. He's a popular actor, too. Yeah, no, the guy who's just in, in everything is, oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, and that's the news. The news with Uncle Nick. From the entire Channel 4 news team, I'm Veronica Corningstone. And I'm Ron Burgundy. Go f*** yourself, San Diego. Ah! Ah, if you're getting kicked out of the hotel room, I don't have a smooth segue. But you should get a new mattress. Lisa, sleep, delivered right to your door. You, you won't get bed bugs. You won't get Legionnaire's disease. Uh, from Lisa's mattresses, hundred because they got a hundred nights guaranteed. If you don't like it, you can send it back, no questions asked, and you'll get a full refund. And you know the wife and I have had this mattress for a couple months now. It's fantastic. It, it breathes. It it, do, it doesn't shift around when your partner moves around. And I, I'm a roamer. Yeah. I'm a I'm the equivalent. You know, in the seventies and eighties, I always did songs about rambling, rambling man, girl. I got to gamble, gamble. This is on the copy. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I'm that when I'm sleeping. It uh, doesn't disturb the wife. She gets a full night's sleep on our Lisa mattress. And here's what you do. Go to bullshow.co slash Lisa. If you use the promo code Andy, A-N-D-Y, you get 75 bucks off your purchase. Hit it up. Hit it up. Uh, great value right to your door. Easy to lay out and assemble. It's it, it's good stuff. You get a good night's sleep. Uh, Lisa sleep at bullshow.co slash Lisa, L-E-E-S-A. Uh, Nick, what do you got coming up this week? Uh, this week I'm um, just uh, getting ready for uh, grad party weekend. Pretty excited. Who's graduating? Uh, cousin of mine. From what? High school? I think College? high school. High oh. school. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was your grad party like? Besides uh, give me money. <laughs> um. Uh, we had uh, all the Filipinos over. Um, we made a uh, bunch of Filipino food. Yeah. Uh, got. Catered, um, about subs from Subway. So, so not a lot of money from that side. No, because <laughs> they bet it all on the Manny fight. This is back in '03. I don't think Manny right. existed. Oh, he might. Have. Uh, uh, Ma- no, Man- Manny was fighting somewhere. He was he, fighting somewhere. He just wasn't Manny yet. There yeah, that's true. All right, get the show iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Subscribe to YouTube as well. And here's what you do: give us a rate review on the iTunes, and if you enjoy the show. Uh, tell a friend. Uh, tell them about this show. It's the 
It's the daily morning show, except in podcast form, and it's on your computer, it's on your phone, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, don't get lost on all the deals. We'll figure it out. Uh, and add to the Jerome homie army. Thanks, producer Ali, for making us not sound so stupid today. But for Nick, I'm Andy Singh and Young. Sayonara and bye bye. We'll talk to you Thursday. Listening to Bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome.